In Autodesk Maya, it is very simple to model polygons. Let's bring in a cube. Here I have a cube and I can press R to bring up the scale controls and scale it up. Over in the modeling toolkit, I have many ways to modify this. I can click on add divisions. It will ask me how many divisions I want to have and I can type in the number one or two and then press enter. I can use the Q command to get the arrow tool back. And now I'm in object mode looking at this. Remember to switch between modes, you wanna press F8 for object mode, F9 for vertex mode, F10 for edge mode, and F11 for face mode. We can also select these in the top of the modeling toolkit. We get object mode, vertex mode, edge mode, face mode. We can also select multi-component. This allows us to select multiple things. For example, I can select a face, an edge, or a vertex all at the same time. This is a very convenient way to model. When modeling polygons in Maya, selection is everything. How can we select things? We can marquee select. We can double click to select all of the vertexes. We can double click to select an edge loop. We can double click to select all of the faces. We can select one face, then shift double click to select a face loop. If we have one edge selected and we type up on the keyboard, it will select the whole ring. If we press down, it'll select a ring like this rather than a loop. We refer to these as loops. And if all the edges are selected in a row like this, we call this a ring. It's not important to remember the terminology, but you should know the difference between having vertical edges like this selected versus having edges in a line selected like this. If we have an edge loop selected, we can press left and right to change which one is selected. If we have a ring selected, we can press up and down to move the ring. So this is a very convenient way to move around. We can also press left and right on face loops to move them up and down quickly, and it will go all the way around the piece just like this, just by tapping the arrow keys. So making loop selections is very important and very easy. Let's talk about smoothing the model. The default view in Maya is viewing the polygons like we see here. If I press the three key on my keyboard, suddenly it smooths it. This is the smooth display. So this shows what it would look like if we subdivided the model. If we press two, we get cage mode so we can see where the polygons are and then what the smooth action of the model is. Please note that this is different than actually subdividing and smoothing the model. We don't want to do that until the end because we want to keep our geometry as simple as possible. So this offers a great way to preview your model. We don't want to model in the smooth mode because we can create bad geometry. We want to model in number one, the polygon mode. Let's talk about some different tools that we can use while we're modeling with our polygons. I'm going to bring in a sphere. I'm going to press W to be able to move it over. I'll press R to scale this up. W again to move it over a bit more. If we have two polygons, we can combine them in many ways. If we shift click two polygons and then click combine, it makes them into one polygon. But if we look at this by pressing four in x-ray mode, we notice that everything is still connected. See how we still have this interior geometry of the sphere inside the cube. Press five on your keyboard to go back to shaded mode. We can also select this polygon that's combined and then click separate in the modeling toolkit. And now it's two polygons. Let's look, at, let's look at the difference between the combined feature and the Boolean feature. So once again, I'm going to shift click two polygons. I'm gonna click Boolean. And then for the operation, I'm gonna click Union. Now in X-ray mode, you'll notice that the interior of this sphere is no longer present. So this is different than the combine feature because this makes a solid object and alters your geometry. Again, press five to go back to shaded. I'm going to delete this piece. Let's bring in another cube. So we talked about adding divisions. Let's look what happens if we click smooth. If I click smooth, suddenly the polygon subdivides and becomes smoother. If we increase these divisions to two, we notice that it becomes even more like a sphere. This is different than if we brought the same cube in, press W to move it over, and then click on add divisions and make two levels of divisions. These look like they're the same amount of shapes, so they have the same amount of quads, but when we subdivide by using the add divisions tool, we don't alter the shape. But when we smooth, 
we're smoothing out the shapes as we add geometry. Both have their uses, just be aware which one you're using. We can get to face mode by pressing F11 or clicking up here or being in multi-component mode. I can click this face and press delete. And now it's missing. I can delete multiple faces. And there's many ways to fix this. If I switch to edge mode by pressing F10, I can select all of these faces around the edge of this hole, then hold shift, right click and fill hole. And this will fill this hole. But now I am missing the geometry that used to be there. Well, there's a tool called the multi-cut tool. I can get it from the modeling toolkit on the right and select it here, or I can hold shift, right click and go to the multi-cut tool. The multi-cut tool will allow me to select one vertex, then another one, and then right click to accept that cut. So I, once again, I can click on a vertex, then click again, then press enter or right click to accept it. When I have the multi-cut tool selected, I can hold down the control button and it will allow me to insert edge loops. This is very convenient. If I hold shift, notice that the edge loop snaps to whatever I have set in my snap settings. If I hold the middle mouse button, it will automatically change color and snap at 50%. This is convenient because sometimes it's very difficult to tell if I'm at 35% or 50%. So I can hold the middle mouse button and be right there. And then it adds an edge loop. To get out of the multi-cut tool, make sure you press Q. Let's bring in one more cube. I brought a cube in. I'm gonna press W to move it over. I'll pan over by holding middle mouse button in Alt or Option. Let's go to edge mode by pressing F10. Let's select two edges by holding the shift key, and then we'll select connect. Connect bridges these two pieces. It offers us some options. If you look at the bottom here, I have segments one. I can add that to be segments three. Then I get three subdivision. It's just another way of subdividing our model. When we have an object selected, we can also turn on soft selection. Let's look at the difference first. If I have an edge here and I press W and I move it up, it moves that edge and these other edges move too, but it's very harsh. I'll press Z to undo. If we twirl out soft selection and allow it to be on, notice that everything turns yellow. That's because my soft selection is at five. But if I lower this value to say two, you'll notice that now I have kind of a heat map on my soft selection. So if I move this up, Notice that everything kind of stretches in a more organic way. Or if I click on this edge and I move things over, you can see how these edges move more than these edges. And I can change the curve to be more drastic if I really want it to fall off quickly. And now I'll have a different way of them moving back. You can see I moved in the same direction, yet I had a different way of them moving because of the way I had this curvature. And then you can click reset curve to put that back to normal. So the soft selection is a great way to move your model around in a more organic way. And remember, we can have this on different things. So if I go to face mode and then I soft select the faces, they will grow. Or if I'm in vertex mode, I can click one vertex and then move it out like that. So soft selection is a great way to move our meshes around and edit them. And then if we click three, we can see what our mesh would look like if it was smoothed out. Let's click one again to go back to the polygon mode. Let's talk about the extrude tool. The extrude tool is a great way to quickly modify and add geometry. For example, if I press F11 to get on face mode, I'm going to turn off soft selection. Then I'm gonna press control or command E, or I can click extrude over here, or I can hold shift and right click and extrude face. When this happens, now I have extrude face and I have options over here. And if I pull out, notice I get another division. I can extrude out this way. I can press G again and extrude out. Now, if I rotate, you can see how I'm adding more faces. If I press G one more time, and I want to scale this in so I have a ring around this extrusion. Well, if I look, I don't have a global scale. There's no light blue scale box in the middle here. To get that to appear, I need to click on any of these. I could click on this one, this one, or this one. Then I get this box and I can bring my selection in, press G to extrude again, and then I can bring this up. Notice that now I have this nice ring around this extrusion. This is a great way to work. We can also extrude multiple faces. 
So if I shift click these three faces, and then I press Control or Command E, and I extrude, then instead of just pulling them out, I'm going to click on one of these and then scale this in. Now I have this nice detail around those pieces. I can press G again and pull them out. So this is a nice way to add edge loops and detail loops as you're going. I can shift click and go to the multi-cut tool, hold control to add in a couple more edge loops as I think I need to maintain that crispness of detail. I can put in edge loops here and here as well. And then if I press three, you can see where the detail is holding and where I may still have problems in my geometry. So if I add in another multi-cut here and here, now when I press three, you'll see how that geometry starts to hold together. We'll cover ring around the details in a future video. We've talked about extruding, but let's talk about welding things together. So target weld works on vertexes or edges. If I click on one vertex and hold my mouse button and drag to the next vertex, they're going to merge together. This is a great way to add details to your model. So here I'm going up and down, adding details. This also works on edges. If I click F10 to go to edge mode and I click and hold in target weld and drag down to this edge, those edges are now going to merge. So I can click on this edge and then drag to that edge and they will merge. Sometimes you can easily create problems with this tool, so be careful. I'm gonna press Z to undo that. We also have the insert edge loop tool. We can hold shift, then right click, and here is the insert edge loop tool. This works just like the multi-cut edge loop tool, except it's a dedicated tool to it. You click on a line perpendicular to where you want the edge loop. So if I want an edge loop here, I click here, and then I let go and I have my edge loop. There are other ways to take our model apart as well. If I go to F11 for face mode, another way to select faces is to hold the tab button and then paint your selection. This works with edges and vertexes as well. Then I can extract this selection and pull it out. Now it is a different part of the model. Then I can select these individually and press Command E to extrude. Then I can move to object mode, select this piece and move it in. So there are many ways to modify and create different objects and polygons. If I bring in a new cube, I can also turn on symmetry. Over here in the modeling toolkit, it says symmetry off. I can select symmetry of the object X, Y, or Z, or the world X, Y, and Z. Let's go ahead and select object X. Now if I click F11 to get a face, and I press Command E to extrude, you can see that I extrude on both sides. I can select this piece and press G to repeat, and I will extrude on both sides. This is very convenient for making anything that has a biomorphic or a symmetry to it. I can press G to repeat, I can scale this in, and then I can extrude out. Notice that I only have a tool on one side. If you want to work where the tool is, just orbit around, and then you can work from this side. I can press G to repeat, scale in, G to repeat, and pull out. I can then go to this face, press G to repeat, I can scale in, then G to repeat, and I can pull out. So now I'm creating all this geometry that is symmetrical. This can save a lot of work while you're modeling. Remember, I can select all these faces, press G to repeat, scale them in, G to repeat, and then pull out. So now I have all this geometry that is occurring symmetrically. So I can make very complex and interesting forms quickly. I'll shift click these, press G to repeat, scale them in, G to extrude one more time, and extrude out. I can then go in and use the multi-cut tool to alter this geometry. I can switch to edge mode. I can make a range selection, and then I can move these down and have them work the way I want. I'm going to turn off symmetry, and I want to show you how you can select different ways to move about. Notice how this is selected. It's angling out. That's because I have component selection on. If I select in my move settings to go to world, now I have this and it's vertical. Let's see how that might work on an angled piece. Let's go ahead and select these edges. We'll move them in and down. Now we have this angled piece. If I go to face mode and I select this piece, and I am on Move Settings World, 
notice that I can only move it this way. But if I select Move Settings Component, now this suddenly becomes angled at this component. So this is a great way to be able to pull things out, especially when you're extruding things on an angle. Watch the difference. Notice I have Symmetry off. So I'll click this one, press Command E to extrude, click on one of these squares, scale in just a little bit, press G to repeat, and pull it out. That's what it looks like if I extrude in Component Move. Let's select this face, press Q for our Move tool, and then we're going to switch to World Settings. So now if I press Command E, I'll scale in and then press W and move out in World Settings, my behavior is completely different. Neither is right or wrong. In this particular geometry, this has created some problems. But this one follows out and extrudes with the component, so that can be a better way to work. Hopefully this gets you excited about basic polygon modeling and Autodesk Maya. Try to go through all the things in the modeling toolkit. Try out each of the tools until you become comfortable working with them. Then you can move on to more advanced modeling topics.